we can now see further into space than we have ever been able to before. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, we're now able to see into the infancy of our universe. Join Future here to see what kind of progress the James Webb Space Telescope has made in its first months of operation. Hi, welcome to Future Here, the show that explores cutting edge science and technology. I'm Joel, and today we're looking at the progress the James Webb Space Telescope has made during its first months it's been capturing and sending images of deep space. So without further ado, let's jump right in. The James Webb Space Telescope has been on its mission for the past 10 months or so now. Here are some of the first images that NASA has shared to the press and public. We'll take an in-depth look at these images, as well as the technology powering the telescope. It's astonishing to see what the telescope has already accomplished, considering it only started its journey on Christmas Day last year. And we have engine start and lift off. Decollage. Decollage, liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. This is the Ariane 5 rocket carrying the James Webb telescope to space on December 25th, 2021. After 20 years of planning and building and a budget of $10 billion, the James Webb telescope was successfully launched into space and deployed for its mission. Ironically enough, as we marvel on uh, this view from the upper stage camera, this will be humanity's last view of the James Webb T Space Telescope as it moves to its work place about a million miles away from Earth. The JWST is a true marvel of engineering. Its massive tennis court sized heat shield, golden mirror and instruments were folded up like an origami to fit it inside the Ariane 5 space rocket. The telescope had a daunting 344 single points of failure, which each could have gone wrong. Literally hundreds of components and transitions had to go just right for the telescope to be operational and the mission to be considered successful. During the next 30 days after launch, the Webb telescope started its unfolding sequence, where it unfolded the origami-like structure. While unfolding, the Webb Telescope was also hurling through space towards its target, the L2 or the Lagrange 2 point. Lagrangian points discovered by mathematician Joseph-Louis Lagrange are locations in space where gravitational forces and the orbital motions of bodies balance each other. Essentially this means that the telescope can hover in place while it observes deep space. The telescope successfully reached its halo orbit around the second Lagrange point in the Sun-Earth system, located some 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. This is an ideal position for the telescope to start observing deep space. There it is shaded from both the Sun's light and heat. The observatory's instruments are super sensitive to heat, including the mid-infrared instrument MIRI, which gets some help from a cryocooler to stay around 7 degrees Kelvin or minus 266 degrees Celsius. The telescope's main feature is its massive golden mirror. The main mirror of the observatory is 6.5 meters wide and it's a unique optical system. It is six times larger than that of the Hubble telescopes, totaling over 25 square meters of collecting area. At the same time, the mirror is also lighter by almost a third, 625 kilograms against Hubble's almost one ton. This is largely thanks to beryllium, which was chosen to be the main material for the JWST's mirror. Beryllium is a very light and durable material, which also has a lower coefficient of thermal expansion compared to glass. There are multiple instruments on board the JWST, the four most notable being the NEARCOM Near Infrared Camera, the NEARSPEC, MIRI and NERIS. These instruments will enable the Webb Telescope to capture near-infrared light. 
This is a wavelength of light that our eyes can't see naturally, but will enable the JWST to view the early universe. This is why the infrared spectrum is utilized, because the early universe has been largely obscured to us. Those galaxies are just so far and the light is so faint that it's very hard for us to capture and view. With the JWST, we're able to measure for the first time near and mid infrared signals that have effectively stretched on their way from these early galaxies to Earth. These instruments enable the JWST to see further into space, into the infancy of the universe, better than the Spitzer and the Hubble telescope, capturing light from over 13 billion light years away. To better understand this in a practical context, think about this. Our planet Earth is roughly 4.5 billion years old. The star in our solar system we call the Sun is roughly 4.6 billion years old. The most distant galaxy the Hubble telescope was able to capture light from is 13.4 billion years old. Sometime in the earliest galaxies the building blocks of life were formed. Now with the James Webb Space Telescope, hopefully we can peer closer over 13.8 billion light years away into the past. After all this effort, delays and suspense, expectations for the JWST were definitely racking up. Our view of the universe is definitely going to change on July 12th. Ken Sembach runs the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, Maryland, home to Webb's Mission Control, and he predicts the day that Webb's first images are released will be on par with the day that Galileo became the first person to ever point a telescope to the sky. And have the first web images been able to live up to the hype? Yes, they have. Finally tonight, a new era in astronomy. NASA releasing a full batch of images and data from the massive James Webb Space Telescope. These images are going to remind the world that America can do big things and then remind the American people, especially our children, that there's nothing beyond our capacity, nothing beyond our capacity. Today represents an exciting new chapter in the exploration of our universe. This telescope is one of humanity's great engineering achievements. So let's dive into viewing some of the best, most beautiful images that the James Webb Telescope has captured so far. This is Arundel, the Dawn Star. In early August, the JWST took new images of the Arundel, the Dawn Star, named after the Lord of the Rings prequel fantasy novel by none other than J.R.R. Tolkien. The name is a reference to the dawn of time as the star's light has traveled approximately 12.9 billion years to reach Earth. Arundel is the most distant star known to us in our universe. It is lensed and magnified by a massive galaxy cluster. Gravitational lensing is nature's magnifying glass for astronomers. The effect takes advantage of the fact that extremely massive bodies, such as galaxy clusters or supermassive black holes, bend light from objects behind them. When light passes by such a body, it behaves as if it were passing through the lens of a telescope, becoming magnified, albeit also distorted. The Hubble telescope had already taken images of Randall, but JWST gave us a new view of the ancient star. Arundel is at least a million times brighter than our sun, and its brightness is increased through gravitational lensing. The JWST also captured this beautiful image of the so-called Cartwheel Galaxy, revealing new details about star formation and the galaxy's central black hole. The Cartwheel Galaxy, located about 500 million light years away in the Sculptor constellation, is a rare sight. Its name comes from its shape resembling the wheel of a wagon. Its shape is the result of a dramatic event, a high-speed collision between a large spiral galaxy and a smaller galaxy not visible in this particular image. 
collisions of galactic proportions cause a cascade of different, smaller events between the galaxies involved and the cartwheel is no exception. The collision most notably affected the galaxy's shape and structure. The cartwheel galaxy contains two rings, a bright inner ring and a surrounding colorful ring. These two rings expand outwards from the center of the collision like ripples in a pond after a stone is tossed into it. Because of these distinctive features, astronomers call this a ring galaxy, a structure less common than spiral galaxies like our own Milky Way. In this beautiful image, we see two galaxies, the galaxy pair VV191. Besides this being an interesting image, it's also technically interesting as the JWST and the Hubble telescope both teamed up to make this composite image of the galaxy pair. The composite image includes near-infrared light from the newer Webb telescope and ultraviolet and visible light from the older Hubble telescope. Together, these two powerful telescopes form the most sensitive instrument to view the universe that we have invented. In this zoomed in and scaled image, you can see this red arc that is actually a galaxy behind VV191 affected by gravitational lensing. These images of the lens galaxy are so faint and so red that they were unrecognized in the original Hubble data, but are unmistakable in Webb's near-infrared image. And if you happen to be wondering if this is the only image that the two telescopes have teamed up on, the answer is no. The two telescopes were also recently used in tandem in the NASA DART mission, where NASA scientists tried if they could divert an incoming asteroid by colliding a spacecraft into it. This could potentially save humankind on Earth if a life-threatening asteroid was headed towards Earth. Two weeks after the DART mission, NASA said that they had successfully been able to divert the asteroid's course in space. This beautiful, almost mystical image features the spiral galaxy IC5332. The web image shows the spiral galaxy in unprecedented detail thanks to its mid-infrared instrument, MIRI. The galaxy lies over 29 million light years from Earth and has a diameter of roughly 66,000 light years, making it about one third smaller than the Milky Way. It is notable for being almost perfectly face on with respect to Earth, allowing us to admire the symmetrical sweep of its spiral arms. MIRI is the only web instrument that is sensitive to the mid infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. One of Mary's most remarkable features is that it operates 33 Celsius below the rest of the observatory at the frosty temperature of minus 266 Celsius. This means that Mary operates in an environment only 7 degrees Celsius warmer than absolute zero, which is the lowest possible temperature according to the laws of thermodynamics. MIRI requires this environment in order for its highly specialized detectors to function correctly and it has a dedicated active cooling system to ensure that its detectors are kept at the correct temperature. Unfortunately, in late August, NASA published news that the MIRI had a technical fault, one of the so-called grading wheels that helps the device select the wavelengths it is measuring had a fault and it got a bit sticky. Let's hope that it can still capture beautiful images in the future. When NASA published this new image of Jupiter in August, an experienced planetary astronomer stated that the image exceeded their expectations. This image comes from the observatory's near-infrared camera, or NIRCAM. The image also shows the Great Red Spot, a famous storm so big it could swallow Earth, and it appears here in white in these views, as do other clouds because they are reflecting a lot of sunlight. The brightness here indicates high altitude, so the Great Red Spot has high altitude hazes, as does the equatorial region, according to one scientist. Check out these mysterious light ripples on the galaxy WR140. 
The object in question is a star around 5,600 light years away and Webb's infrared eye has picked out an extraordinary detail. It's surrounded by what appears to be concentrated rings of light radiating outward in the galaxy. Now people were rather puzzled by this image when it first popped up on social media in late August. These rings are suspected to be dust shells that extend outwards from the center of the galaxy over 10 trillion kilometers. That's a distance that's mind-bogglingly hard to comprehend. Put it another way, it's 70,000 times the distance between Earth and our Sun. The JWST also captured its first images and spectra data of our neighboring planet Mars on September 5th. Due to Webb's unique observation post nearly a million miles away at the Sun-Earth Lagrange Point 2 provides a view of Mars's observable disk, the portion of the sunlit side that is facing the telescope. As a result, Webb can capture images and spectra with the spectral resolution needed to study short-term phenomena like dust storms, weather patterns, seasonal changes, and in a single observation, processes that occur at different times of a Martian day. The spectral signatures, including deep valleys known as absorption features of water, carbon dioxide, and carbon monoxide are easily detected with Webb. The way NearSpec is able to analyze the atmospheric composition of Mars here also brings hope that we may find exoplanets and be able to analyze their atmospheric composition in the future. Last but not least for many people, and definitely not for me, is the new Pillars of Creation images by the JWST. I'm super happy that these images were able to make the cut, as they were just released on the week when I was finishing up this video. Here's the older image that the Hubble telescope took in 1995. I bet it's an image that many people associate with space exploration and telescopes in general, as well as being a big personal favorite for me and getting me interested about space as a kid. The pillars of creation are a part of the Eagle Nebula, a part of space where dense gas and dust birth new stars, about six and a half thousand light years from Earth. The pillars in this view of the nebula are made of interstellar dust and gas that feed star formation. The new image was taken by Webb's near-infrared camera or NIRCAM, now better than ever you're able to see the red orbs inside the dust clouds. These red orbs gather gas and dust and once they've gathered enough mass they begin to collapse under their own gravity, slowly heat up and eventually form new stars. Isn't this just awe-inspiring? The JWST has also been hit by micrometeorites multiple times during its short mission. Often these rocks are very small, just 0.1 millimeter in diameter or the size of a speck of sand. The particles have caused dimples in the mirror and NASA scientists have been confident that they can compensate for these both by physically moving or realigning the mirrors and in post-production when these images are edited to be in their final form and color. Let's hope the Webb telescope stays safe and operational during its intended mission. The launch was so successful in December that scientists actually raised its expected lifespan from 5 to 10 years. So let's hope everything goes well in the future. That concludes this episode on the James Webb Space Telescope. Let's hope there's much more that we can learn about the telescope, its findings and space in general in the months to come. Write your comments of what you think was the most awesome, intriguing, surprising or whatever you thought about the Webb Telescope has made thus far and remember to subscribe to the channel. It really helps me in creating this content in the future. Until next time, bye.